Hey guys, Mason here, Cardinal Gaming. Appreciate you guys clicking on the video. I wanted to show this one more time uh, after I did my live, going over uh, the fake cards we got in recently. And I actually went back and I, I grabbed a Hoopa EX, the promo, versus the Hoopa that is fake. Um, this is a pretty a good example. Which one's fake? This card in particular. And if this, when these cards were made, this is the best of the worst examples of like what a good fake card looks like. Um, it is this one, by the way. But I think, hold on, now I gotta check. Yes. Once you move it up and move it around, you can see the hollow is not as dynamic, not as fluid, not as uh, uh, prismatic as the hollow on this card. This one's just kind of like everything shiny all the time. So, yeah. But, again, looking at a binder, this isn't like a super expensive card either. But, uh, you know, if you're flipping through, uh, this is very missable. So, on the live, I want to do a, a separate video because it's like buried in like 40 minutes of me looking at all these fakes. Uh, and I talked about looking through a loop to look at cards. Um, again, with this latest run, it can be not so obvious sometimes, especially if you don't have something like this to compare it to side by side. Um, a lot of the era of the late X and Y era, um, all that kind of stuff is, it gets really, really iffy. Kind of gets kind of scary because the printing is so shiny on the front of these cards that uh, it can be really hard to tell if something is fake or not, because it looks almost identically shiny to, like, one of these cards. If we kind of go through the light, it's still super shiny. Like, this is way more shiny than what cards even, like, today are, comparatively. So, I wanted to do a video where we go through with a loop, and I tell you what to look for, and things like that. So, um, in the experience of going through stuff and looking at stuff, um, the way that all trading cards are printed that they are printed on machines that use multiple layers to create these color effects. So these large sheets will get fed through these commercial printers and they get ink added to them basically on a color. Very similar to the printer that you have probably at your house that uses color with uh, like, a, like ink, inkjet printers. Except this is very, very fine, very, very exact, very like way more exact than anything that is available to regular Joe Schmoes like us. The printers that these are created on are multi-million dollar machines and they get used in, in big settings. They're huge giant machines. They take entire rooms worth of space to run and it take several people to operate at, you know, at high capacity. So um, everything's moving really fast and, and everything's super exact. So they're very awesome machines. Probably very worth the money, but yeah, the fakes that are out there, they're getting really good. They're using really good machines uh, to do something like this. But, um, again, it's, it's, it is a different kind of process. It's not the same. Um, it's, it's very different. So I wanted to go through real quick and kind of go and give you guys an idea of what to look for on a card. Again, this is the authentic one, the real one. Again, the backs used to be a dead giveaway. Not so much anymore. It's kind of more washed out, kind of less muted colors. You can kind of see right there. But if this was not in comparison, yeah, you could probably pick up this card and be like, yeah, this looks pretty good. So what to look for on these cards is, again, the colors are added in different layers. And black is added in a separate layer all by itself. The color printer that you use at your house could mix all the colors together to create a black or they'll have just like black separate ink but it all gets added at the same time this one it goes over last so everything that is black on this card should have very crisp cor corners and not something like a inkjet printer will have or a sorry it's getting blurry it was not doing this before there we go it's gonna, everything's going to be really crisp on this card. Whereas something like this, it's going to be more muddy. It's going to be kind of not as precise. And for the text may be good because they might uh, scrub this off and then redo this text.
But things like these symbols, um, those types of things are going to be harder to duplicate. And things like the HP, stuff like that. And that's what we want to look at through a loop. A loop like this, you can get this off Amazon. It has a kind of more basic loop and then a more magnified one. And it has lights on it that really help when you try to look up really close to a card. So with this loop, and I'll edit it if I have to, but hopefully I won't have to edit it to show you what I'm talking about underneath the loop. I'm going to move this really, really close to the camera. Kind of move it around. Now this is not on the most powerful uh, lens. This one is what you'd want to be using, but it's really hard to get it exact, especially in front of a camera. So I'm just going to use this for the example. But see how nice and crispy that HP is? All the black ink on this card is super, super exact. And the pattern that this printer prints in, the black will be separate from any sort of color printing. So what they call the rosette pattern of the printing process um, there's no rosette to this because there's no color mixing involved with black. It's just straight black. So they don't have to mix colors like that in order to create these different kind of color shifts. So uh, these are nice crisp letters. There's no pixelation. There's no blurring. There's no anything like that around the edges of a card like this. Again, I'm not using the most powerful setting, so this is not the most obvious thing, but it should be good enough just for these purposes. Focus, please. Please focus. There we go. Not as crispy. Look at that one in the bottom of that seven. How it blurs like the camera lens is. See how not crisp that is? That's going to be over the whole entire area of this card under this magnification. And again, the more powerful lens is the one you pretty much always want to use. And again, the light helps when you do that. So the blacks are what you're looking at on the printing process on the front. On the other side, on the back, as I stop my alarm from going off, um, the number one thing to check under a loop and have definite proof is the TM at the end of Pokemon. So again, the printer prints in layers and the colors get mixed together in a rosette pattern to create these different kind of colors. Things that are pure, pure white, not like the Pokeball, but like the TM right there that is just white. Again, it's going to be super crisp because it shouldn't have any ink there at all. Nothing. The, the program that has fed this information in has told the printer to not put any color at that area. So, again, there should be no pixelation. There should be no uh, blurring. The T and the M should have very straight lines. That there shouldn't be any sort of jagged edges to it. If you look under this loop again, let me put the color or the light on that side, so it kind of helps a little bit. Look at that guy right there. I know you're thinking. I mean, looks pretty good. It's not bad. Again, under the other magnification, it's going to be a lot more obvious. And the other card, because this is the fake one. Let's look at the real one. The TM, focus, over here, bam. A lot clear, again. The, the, the space between the T and the M should be very obvious, very transparent, very clear and crispy. Let's see if I can get it. That it's such a small area. I should be able to get it, hopefully, right there. Let's put this light over. Again, this is something that is not duplicable just because of how the printing process works for these printers. Ah. I mean, even right there, you can kind of sell. No, you can't. I was, it was doing so good earlier. It's probably as good as it's going to get. All those little straight lines on that M should be very, very obvious. I know, it's not coming over. But when you use your eye, it's going to be much more clear when you sync it up like this. And you're like, oh yeah, so much better. So that is the de facto new way of determining 
a card to be real or fake on Pokemon that we use. Um, again, there's other ways. I, again, I used to use below the, the O. There's like this little like dice pip pattern. It kind of looks like a, a number five die. I used to use that because these printers were not exact enough to get that down. But now, it's pretty good. It's pretty close. So, that's not a good way to look at it anymore. We were looking out on the stream as well with like the Pokeball. Kind of like this height. See how nice and crispy the white is right there? Compared to this where it's really, even like through the ball itself, it looks more blue and washed out. And the, the, the edges of the shine on the Pokeball aren't as defined. It makes it a little more obvious. And again, in person, it looks better and it's more obvious. But this is the best I can do with what I got. So, but yeah, I wanted to put this out and make this separately. God, look at that. Look how <sighs> scary. Man. But yeah, anyways, I appreciate you guys watching this back through. This is cool. This is cool stuff to look at. You're always learning, always figuring stuff out. So, you know, when they up their game and you have to look for something else, we got to the point to where we found something else. So, that's all I got. I don't want to put this, again, I wanted to make a video about this. Uh, that is a little more straightforward and obvious instead of being buried in that video. So, Again, appreciate you guys watching. If this helps you out, please give it a like. And uh, do you have any fake cards in your collection? Do you do you want to go through your collection now with a loop and see if you can see if anything's a real or fake? Let me know in the comments. Again, appreciate you guys for watching. Okay, bye.